Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at Keybase 9.5's new automation features. So there's just a few things for us to look at. Just got a quick example set up here. So you get the idea, just some drums and a synth. Now I've got a towel filter installed as an insert on the uh, synth channel. Could do this with the filter on the Halion Sonic, but I'm just going to do it nice and easy with an external filter because it's straightforward to do. And what would have happened in the past would I would have needed to set up a number of points here because the way that we want this to progress over time is not a straight line as it's represented on screen. It would often be a curve which would be steep towards the end and have a fairly slow long build. Whereas now we can do that much quicker. So if I just put two points in. So previously we would have needed to make another point here and then move that one down and then another point here and move that one down to get some kind of curve. We no longer need to do that. So as you can see here with those here, as soon as we've got two automation points with a difference between them in terms of level, we get a circular handle on the line and then we can just move that around to get the kind of curve we're after. Turning snap off will make life a little bit easier. You can see it is still a bit snappy here and there. It does just pop down. So you have to be careful with your resolution, but that's going to do the trick. And now, now, as you can see there, deliberately made the starting point too low. Now in the past, when you needed to do that, you'd have to play around with scaling because you wouldn't be just changing this one point. You'd be changing multiple points. Whereas now you can just move that up to the point where we just get a dull kind of sound. So I'm just going to mute the drums, play that. And probably that end point might be a bit too high, but just by juggling these three points, rather than having to change multiple points and play around with automation uh, handles and dragging multiple points to try and get it right you can just do it so much quicker so this is this is a huge boon as far as I'm concerned and for me the biggest feature of 9.5 and again if you decided you wanted to drag that over a longer period you could just do it by moving the one point and your curve will follow so loads of reasons why this is great. So that's the first one. Now the other one is inserting instant changes. So where you wanted to have something change. So what I'll do is just duplicate that a couple of times, delete the other automation, but you can see how nicely when you delete something, the curves follow. So that would be a sensible curve to have over two. And in fact, if we wanted to do it over four, we could just do that, delete those, and there you go that would have taken 30 seconds longer to do that normally if you'd had multiple points in there because you'd have to move the points to whatever fraction you are. So loads of reasons why this is a good thing to have. Now, if we just delete those there. So let's say for this third time round, so this one here, let's say we want to just reduce the volume here. If I put a snap on and as soon as I've done those, so I will put those so they're exactly on each bar as soon as I've done those we see this diamond appears and that allows us to create a step change which is just great so there we can bring the filter down on a step exactly where we want whereas previously you'd had to create another two points highlight them and move them down so again much much quicker workflow now the third thing is that the range selection tool now works with automation. Now initially this may not look like it's that important. So we can now just select those and then play around with them in the way you would do before. Now that's much the same as putting your selection tool around them and, and doing that. But there's a little more to it than that. Firstly, as you may have noticed, when you do it with the range selection tool, it will do it over that whole range and create new points as necessary. So obviously, if you are a little more accurate with the way that you select your range like that, that will work in exactly the same way as the previous one was, whereas this will do it over a larger area and allow you to create new points as necessary, which again, depending on what you want, can be useful. But 
I think it's also really useful because quite often you might have automation points such as these which are right at the top of that lane and unless you're super careful if you've got a big complicated arrangement and the tracks are quite small unless you zoom everything in and so on it's really easy to end up selecting notes and parts etc and then you end up in the wrong mode you're no longer just altering that whereas with this you can just whack it along the channel all you've got to be careful on is the time that you're selecting so obviously there are times when you will want to just select some points but having the choice you'll find in a lot of situations using the range selection tool on automation will be much quicker and more accurate and also can give you more creative possibilities by introducing these steps etc where previously you'd need to draw in extra points and so on so there's a lot to be said for what looks like a small change, but actually I know this is going to save me probably hours a week in the, the work that I'm regularly doing. So that's just a quick look at the changes of the automation in Cubase 9.5. Thanks for watching.